Good evening, I'm Prasad and this is Kini News. In a legal twist fit for a Netflix drama, a critical witness is stepping into the spotlight to support Najib Abdul Razak's plea for house arrest. Will this mystery figure be the get-out-of-jail-free card Najib needs? A critical witness is poised to submit an affidavit backing former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak's bid for house arrest for the remainder of his six-year jail term. Lead counsel Muhammad Shafi Abdullah confirmed this following in-chamber case management at the Kuala Lumpur High Court this morning. However, the identity of the witness remains undisclosed. During the session, Shafi informed Judge Amrit Singh about the significance of the witness. Abrajit has scheduled April 17th for the hearing of Najib's application for leave to begin the judicial review. The review pertains to an alleged supplementary order by the Agung linked to the partial pardon that reduced Najib's sentence and fine. Najib filed the judicial review on April 1st while serving his sentence at the Kajang prison. According to Najib's affidavit, the Agung's primary royal order for the partial pardon was accompanied by a supplementary order allowing house arrest. If you're hoping to get answers from our Home Minister about Najib's supposed get-out-of-jail-free card, look elsewhere because he's as clueless as you and me. Home Minister Saifuddin Nasution Ismail said he has no information about a purported addendum added to the partial pardon granted to Najib Abdul Raza, which would allow the former Premier to finish his sentence under house arrest. Saifuddin said this when asked about the claim made by Najib in a judicial review leave application filed at the Kuala Lumpur High Court on April 1st. Saya tak ada maklumat tentang dokumen tambahan. Dia kata dia ada. Sebab itu saya kata, uh, saya akan teliti setakat mana yang ada pengetahuan pada kita. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tidak, tidak. Sebab saya bukan hanya anggota Padan Board. Mana. Saya pun tak tahu. Yesterday, Najib claimed that an addendum in a recent royal pardon allowed him to serve the remainder of his six-year jail term under house arrest. He was seeking a court order to compel the Home Minister, the Attorney General, the Pardons Board, Putrajaya, and a few other respondents to confirm this alleged addendum in the royal pardon that halved his initial 12-year jail sentence over the 42 million ringgit SRC international corruption case. According to a copy of the Judicial Review bid, Najib claimed that the addendum was issued by the Yandi Pertuan Agung on January 29th. Amno Youth Chief Dr. Mohamed Akmal Saleh continues to dance on the edge of controversy despite the King's caution, which likely means his crusade against Kekimat will continue. Amno Youth Chief Dr. Mohamed Akmal Saleh remains firm on the controversial Allah Sox issue despite a stern warning from the young Dipertuan Agong to refrain from escalating tensions. When asked by Malay Zikini if he would comply with the King's decree, and the Amno leadership's call to ease tensions, Akmal questioned, did the king ask to stop the boycott? Pressed on whether he would take responsibility for his vocal boycott stance against the convenience store chain and step back, Akmal redirected focus, seeking clarification on which aspects of his campaign were considered inflammatory. In a separate statement on Facebook, Akmal insisted there was nothing to fear framing his actions as reflecting the people's concern, emphasising the boycott was voluntary and advocating for peaceful protest. Yesterday, AMNO Supreme Council member Bung Mokhtar Radin disclosed that the party leadership had directed Akmal to halt the Allah Sox issue escalation and boycott calls against KK Mart. The AMNO Supreme Council had initially supported Akmal's boycott initiative. Akmal has also initiated a boycott campaign against cosmetics influencer Alif Shukri's products, citing perceived disrespectfulness in a Hari Raya video towards the sanctity of Ramadan. In a legal showdown over the Amno Youth Chief's sword wielding stunt, lawyers for Liberty have accused the police of selective prosecution. Lawyers for Liberty said the failure by the police to investigate Amno Youth Chief Dr. Akmal Saleh over his Facebook post showing him wielding a traditional Japanese sword because no reports were lodged points to selective prosecution. 
In a statement, LFL's director, Zaid Malik, said, It is an abdication of duty by the police whose primary statutory function is to preserve and protect public order. He said under Section 3, Bracket 3 of the Police Act, the police have the duty to maintain law and order, preserve the peace and apprehend offenders. He added that as such, the police cannot choose to enforce the law in one case and turn a blind eye to another. Elaborating, Zayed said that there is nothing in the law that states that the police investigative power begins only upon a report being lodged. He said it is an irresponsible position to take as it is the duty of the police to investigate any crime when they become aware of it and the inflammatory Facebook post has been national news. Zai added, in fact, it is common for the police themselves to make the police report to initiate an investigation. He questioned why ordinary members of the public have been arrested and swiftly charged for any alleged controversial comments made on social media, while politicians like Akmal can get away scot-free by doing the same. Akmal's post dated March 14, one day after the discovery of socks bearing the word Allah, being sold at a Kekimat outlet, was captioned, quote, No matter what, we will not waver from our stance. Better to die standing than live kneeling. At the time, he had called for the implementation of a single-stream education system, sparking heated debates over vernacular schools. His first comment on the Kekimat issue came a day after, on March 15, when he expressed dissatisfaction with the convenience store chain's apology and called for a boycott. Voters in Kuala Kububaru, get your my cards ready because the by-election is locked and loaded for May 11. The Kuala Kububaru by-election is set for May 11, with nomination day on April 27 and early voting on May 7, announced EC Chairperson Abdul Ghani Saleh. The EC also revealed that the election would require a budget of 2.5 million ringgit. The seat became vacant after three-term assembly person Lee Ki Hyong's passing on March 21st due to ovarian cancer. Meanwhile, postal voting applications for all categories opened today. 760 officials will oversee the by-election at 20 polling stations with 77 polling channels. Observers are welcome but must adhere to EC guidelines. Ghani added that two campaign enforcement teams will monitor campaign activities throughout the official period. Once bitten, twice shy. However, Alif Shukri may not have heard of this saying because he keeps doing the same thing every raya. The Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, in cooperation with the Royal Malaysian Police, recorded a statement from business person Alif Shukri Kamar Zaman at the MCMC headquarters yesterday. MCMC said the statement was recorded following complaints over the content of his controversial Ideal Fitri video clip. In a statement, MCMC said the video clip uploaded on his social media platform is seen as offensive content that may violate provisions under the Communications and Multimedia Act 1998. It added that this includes Section 233 of the Communications and Multimedia Act 1998, which prohibits making and transmitting communication which is obscene, indecent or false, with intent to annoy, abuse, threaten or arrest another person. It said once the investigation paper is ready, it will be submitted to the Attorney General for further action. MCMC added that the investigating officers have seized a SIM card believed to belong to the suspect, a mobile phone used to upload the video clip to assist in the investigation. Hey you, is that a petrol bomb in your hand? Put it down and join our Muhiba Story Photo and Essay campaign. Share your cross-cultural friendships to celebrate Malaysia's diversity. Submit a photo with friends or family from different ethnic and religious backgrounds along with a 100-word story to our story at malaysiakini.com by April 30. Selected stories will be featured on Malaysia Kini and contributors will receive a free one-month subscription. Let's build a better Malaysia together. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Prasad. Thank you for watching.